Const coefficients. So we'll start with that one. Uh, the linear with constant coefficients. So our linear ODE we'll write it the same way we've written it before. The first derivative, you can write the zero derivative so the pattern is obvious. And on the other side, we'll have f of x, or we usually use q of x. I don't know why my notes say f now. So I'm going to keep f of x so it matches. I'm pretty sure I copied the notation out of your book. So usually there's a capital Q of x on the right side. So I'll just put a little note here. So usually we have q of x where we see f of x here. So what we're going to do, starting here, we're going to take L of both sides. So we're going to treat both sides the same. So I don't want to keep rewriting this a ton of times. So what I'm going to do is uh, apply L to both sides and use a linear property on the left side. So linear property, we know that it's going to be L of each one added up like separately. And we can also bring the constant coefficient outside. So if an is not constant, I couldn't bring it outside. So when I L both sides, we're going to have a n L yn I don't know why my constant coefficients switch sides, but they commute, so that'll be okay. L of y first derivative plus and of course we've got to L both sides so we've got to L the F function as well. All right. So any questions about skipping the linear part of that where we just split up L over addition and scalar multiplication? And so now it makes sense to use summation notation. So we got our smallest will be 0, k equals 0 up to n, a k l y k derivative. So that looks a lot nicer than writing it all out. So what we're going to do is basically look at what is L of y to the k? So we're going to examine that term and see what we can do. I can't write very well today, so I moved too much dirt yesterday. My forearms are dead. So what is L of, so we're going to consider So all we're going to do is just write down what does L do to this function. So we saw from the definition, it's integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative sx times our function, which in this case is just 
the kth derivative of y. Now we'll start out with the easiest one when k is 0. So that means no derivatives. So what is L of regular y? You could write y0 derivative if you want to. 0 infinity e negative s x y dx. And we're going to, without knowing anything about y, there's really not much you can do aside from just write this down. You could, the only thing I can really think of doing here is integration by parts because there's a product. So that's about the only thing you can really do, but because we don't really know about what's the derivative of y, we can change forms a little bit. Um, so let's just write out the next term. When k equals 1, we have L of y derivative is integral 0 to infinity e negative sx y prime dx. So let's do integration by parts here. Now, <clears throat> when we do integration by parts, you can do integration by parts any time there is a product. Even if there's no product, you can always take everything to be one part and then the minimum to be the other part. So you can always do integration by parts. May not lead you to something nicer, though. So we're going to pick our u and our dv. What is a reasonable choice for, let's see. So e to the negative sx is pretty much as easy to take a derivative as it is to take an antiderivative. So e to the negative sx doesn't really have a preference as to where should I assign it. Now, looking at this, I do see y prime. So does it make sense to put y prime here or to put y prime here? Which one would be a better choice? The dv. The dv, because then v is just regular y. All right, so we're going to make that choice right there. So I'm going to let dv be y prime, and of course, y prime dx. So what is regular v? Just regular y. So dv was a derivative of y, so regular v is just y. And of course, u is what we didn't choose, so it's e to the negative sx. And du negative s e negative sx. So any integration by parts questions before we actually go through with it. And applying integration on parts is uv. From 0 to infinity. I'm being a little sloppy because I should write lim a approaches infinity instead of writing infinity. But there's enough other stuff to write down that let's just be lazy and not change that notation. So what I'm talking about is anytime you have an infinity endpoint, you should turn it into a limit. Plus, no, minus integral v du. <coughs> so minus, it's going to turn to a plus s e negative sx y, and I forgot to write dx down there. Any questions on integration by parts, the actual application or end result? This second term looks kind of familiar. Look at that. It's s times what we had before. So what we had right here is exactly, forgetting about the s, it's this part right here. So we're going to go ahead and make that swap in. So we got s times L of y. I'm just going to call this L of y. I don't want to keep writing the zero derivative. Ah, oh, it's sly. 
That's clever. Now the other part here, we can actually evaluate it. Move this over a little bit. So let's use the endpoints. What variable am I plugging in the uh, zero and the infinity for? That's x. Not written down, but it's dx. So these are x values, not y values. So do not plug these in for y. If you want to, you can write a little s e uh, x equals x equals. So those are x endpoints. So we have y e negative s times infinity minus y e negative well, it doesn't really matter, it's going to be 0, y e to the 0. Oh, I was a little bit lazy. This y is a function of x. So I'm going to write it out as it's a y of x. I don't want to forget that part. So it is a function of x, so therefore these guys right here. And in my notes, I did use a limit. So we'll use a limit on the next step. So this is y of infinity minus y of 0 right there. So let's correctly apply the infinity. So this is really lim b approaches infinity, y of b, e negative s times b. e to the 0 is 1, so this is just y of 0. So this term is supposed to be 0. Somewhere around here. Wouldn't the e term be in the denominator so it could be So we definitely read it like this right here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just a little concerned because that may go towards infinity also. Uh, certainly if it's a polynomial, the exponential wins. It's only going to win if I think our base, basically if it got bigger faster than e to the sb. So this is supposed to approach 0. I don't have in my notes exactly why. But that first term is going to approach 0. And we're going to re, uh, rewrite this, but change the order. So I'll write it as sly minus y0. And that is L of y. We'll call it L of y1. 
So we're going to play the same game, except do it for when k equals 2. So we're going to same first step here, u negative sx, y second derivative dx. And this y is a function of x. So do integration by parts a second time. So what should I choose for dv? Y is second derivative or y double prime. So it's the thing that we have a derivative of. And what's left over? E negative sx du negative s e negative sx. So regular v is now y first derivative of x. So any integration by parts questions? So I want you to put this back together, like actually do the integration by parts, and then the term that basically looks like uh, what we had the first time will also go to zero. So go ahead and put this back together. So from here, this last term again looks familiar, except now it is the same as right up there, L of y1. is L of Y2. And we'll make this last substitution here. That's L of Y1. Oh, 0 to infinity. I completely forgot about that. That's rather important. So the infinity term is going to disappear, and we got y1 of 0 times e to the 0, which is 1, s times l of y1 is right up there. So that's sly minus y0. That should be a minus y1 of 0.
So I'll rewrite this, put the positive terms first. S squared L of Y minus, and we have, let's see, we'll start with the lowest power of S first. So that's minus Y one of zero plus S Y of zero. Is this what it is in your book? I have a, in my notes, I have a cube right here, is what I'm worried about. Yeah, this, what, what's written down here, the same as the book for, uh, for L of Y2? Yeah. Okay. So I could do the same thing when K equals three, except it's gonna take a little bit of time. So let's see if we can think of a pattern. How are these things changing? So that's L of Y2. I'm going to write L of Y1 below it. So we got S L of Y minus Y0. And L of Y0. I think there's really nothing else we can write. Just L of Y, yeah. So what is the general pattern here? I'm gonna fill in an extra term, which we don't need to write, but it might make the pattern easier to see. I'm gonna write S to the zero power. So we got no S's, S to the first, S squared. So the first part of this is definitely, so if I want to write L of Y to the N, or L of Y N, so it should be pretty clear that that's the first term. So I don't see minus anything over here. So there are zero terms in there. And then uh, looking up, there's one term. And looking up, there's two terms. So if I went up again, there'd be three terms. Now, can we write down a pattern here? So one of the problems is I don't know the value of n, so I can't just write out n terms. So I could try to write the first maybe two terms and then dot, 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 and then the last term. Or I can go right into summation notation. So let's write out uh, the first few terms and then maybe the last few terms. So let's take a shot at what we think L of Y3 would look like. So it definitely would look like S cubed L of Y minus. So what would... What could this look like? So we got y zero derivative here. And the next line up, we have a zero derivative and a one derivative. So the next line up would probably go zero derivative, one derivative, two derivatives. So let's write that out. And then we'll worry about the uh, how many s's appear in front of each one. So this should look something like y triple prime I'll leave some room to write coefficients plus, and this is of course of zero. All these are evaluated at zero. Y triple prime zero plus Y double prime zero plus. Yeah, I was worried about that. I think I went a little bit overboard on the priming. Plus, and this will be the zero derivative at zero. All right, now let's figure out S coefficients. So we're just looking on these three. So this is S to what power if I want to put a coefficient in front here? Whoa. So that could be S to the zero power. So, and looking above, 
s to the 0, and then s, I really don't want to write a first power, but I writ will, so s to 0, s to the 1, and then the next one seems like it would be s0, s1, s2. And if you think about, oh, that's not a first derivative, that's a 0 derivative. I'm going to erase all this green stuff later. Uh, but if you look, what are the sum of those two numbers? 1. What's the sum of those two numbers? 1. So this pattern continues. looks like the sum of the, I don't want to call them both exponents. One's an exponent and one is a derivative. But the sum of those should be 1 less than 3. So the sum should be 2. So I'm going to put some s's in front so that the sum of the exponent and the derivative is 2. So I already see 2 right here. So I could go s to the 0. And moving over, we'll have s to the first power. And moving over again, s to the second power. So then the sum of those, and there's an invisible 0 derivative. So the sum of those two should always be 1 less than 3. This is a tricky pattern to see. Another way to look at it, as your derivative goes up, your s coefficient goes down. So you have one going up and the other going down, like that. So it's a tricky pattern to see. Probably would be a good idea to compute the third one, maybe even the fourth one, but I don't want to spend that much time computing all these. So I'm just going to say this is the pattern, and we'll write the nth, pattern, the nth term pattern down. So this seems perfect for a summation notation. So we'll go from 0, we'll use the letter k equals 0. We've got to stop at n minus 1. That's a little weird if you count on your fingers when n is 3. You're going to start at 0, and you've got 0 term, the 1, and the 2. So when n is 3, you actually get 3 terms because we're starting counting at 0. So you get one more term than it looks like you get. And how does this pattern work? If we write down this order, we got s to the k power times y, oops, not the k derivative y. This is going to look ugly. n minus 1 plus k, I believe. Ah, easy thing to do. Let's see what those two numbers add up to. They should add up to n minus 1, which they definitely don't add up to n minus 1. So let's fix it. So it's a function of k and n. Now let's just do guess and check. That's more fun anyways. So I'm going to need a minus k in here for sure to cancel out the other k. And let's just do n minus k and see what we get. So add up those two exponents. Almost there. k cancels negative k. But we're one too many. So we'll do a minus 1 to compensate. So it should be n minus k minus 1. There we go. k cancels negative k, we get n minus 1. So the sum of our exponents will be n minus 1. 
All right. Now, if you notice, this relies on higher and higher derivatives of the y function. So this will work out really well if our information includes some values of y prime, y double prime, y triple prime of 0. So if we know uh, what we call those are initial conditions. So if we know the right initial conditions, the different derivatives of y, the, the values at 0, then we can figure this out relatively quickly. So now what we're going to do is take this and plug it back into our original. So we're going to take something that's confusing when we looked at only one part and then put it back into the ODE because all we really did somewhere where in the world are we? All we really did was examine what that piece looked like. So now we're going to take that and drop it in here. <coughs> So things are going to get a lot uglier before they get nicer. So here we go. Let's label this with an asterisk. asterisk. And what we're going to do is plug in what we just got back into here. So I'm going to copy down the notation for my notes so I don't mess up the indexes instead of trying to scroll up and down. And my notes have dot, dot, dot instead of the summation notation. So I'm just going to copy down what I have because I don't want to mess this up. So that first term is Sn L of Y. And of course it's An times all this stuff minus, <coughs> and I'm actually going to distribute this an times. Now I'm going to rewrite the summation, except expand it out. Okay, so that's just L of the first term right there. Now we're going to apply L to the second term. So it's just L on the first term. Maybe I should color code this. So that's right there. And it's a nice blue. We'll do that second term. We'll do that one right down there. So we're going to go to the second term now. Plus, and that summation is going to look like, in this case, the highest derivative is n minus 2 at 0 plus s y n minus 3 at 0 plus down to s n minus 2 
y of 0. So that's the second term. And now we have plus dot, 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 plus. So that takes care of the, if I keep color coding, Gray is pretty good for dots, so that oh, is that going to mess up? Nope. So there's all the terms that I'm not writing going down. So I'm taking out. This is way too big. If I wrote this, I'd have to use like a receipt paper or something like that that was four feet long. You could write it out, but you would need a massive amount of uh, room, which we don't. I don't have. So that's the dot 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 part. Now the next term, we'll go with a new color. Let's do. We'll go pink for this one. So I think they get a lot less ugly now because they're getting very small. So this next term is, actually in my notes I did one before it, but that's okay. Go right there, A1, uh, S, L of Y, minus A1, Y of zero. Last term was a zero s l of y, or no, just a zero l of y, and so that was a pink one. The last color, we'll go. I want to do red. We'll go orange. That's a good color. So that's our orange term. Now we're about to go into the other side of the equation. What's left? Purple. So this will be our purple part right here. Equals L of F. The right side's kind of boring. All right. So that's the expanded version written out as nice as we possibly can. I know you don't have all those colors, but it does go in order. So I just took horizontally and laid out vertically right there. So this should look like, look like a total mess right now. What's that? A colorful mess. A colorful mess, yes. Like a pile of Skittles. Those almost are the, oh, I just use yellow. It doesn't matter. Top side. So we're going to rearrange the Top side, I have that in quotes. Top side. So the good news is this is a finite sum. There's not infinite terms. Even if n is 100, there's whatever, 100 or 99 terms in the first one, and then 98 terms. So even if n is a big number, it's not an infinite number of terms. So that means we can rearrange the order. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, the order is written down here is just the one that we derived. So we're going to rearrange the order a little bit. And the way we're going to recollect terms is by looking at uh, different uh, derivatives of y. So we'll go with the, we'll go with the terms that have, uh, that have no y in them other than L of y. So yeah, we'll go with the L of y terms first. So what I'm doing is basically going and picking off all those terms right there. And I'm going to collect all those together. And then we're going to go and group up on sort of increasing orders of y, y prime, y double prime. So we're going to group up like that. So normally I would say rearrange on the left side of the equation. Oh, I should have written this. I don't know why I wrote it up there. Equals. That should be written down there so it continues down like that. Okay, so we're going to rearrange the top side. So our L of Y terms are going to be first. And I am copying this out of my notes. So we're going to write it down and then go and see that a few of them are correct and then the pattern makes sense. So we have a n, s n, a n minus 1, s n minus 1, 
A1S plus A0, L of Y, plus the next term, this is going to be the uh, zero derivative of Y. And actually, these are all going to be minus, not plus. So in this, we have a n s n minus 1 so we start if you want you can write s to the 0 power but I'm going to leave it off well might as well leave it on s 0 minus next one a n s n minus 2 a n minus 1 s n minus 2 plus a 3 s so that's a y prime of 0 term so let's just make sure this makes sense so I want to look at where are all the L of Y's. So I'm going to look at what those coefficients look like. So I see an L of Y right here. So I got an A0 coefficient. That is the one on the far right there at the bottom of the screen. And A1S comes from right there. There's the A1S. And keep going up. Here's the top one, ANSN. A n minus 1, S n minus 1. Those are the first two terms written down there. So I don't really want to look for the other terms, but if you look carefully, the other terms come out like this. So this is minus dot 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 minus A n s plus A n minus 1. And this is y n minus 2 of 0 minus just a n y n minus 1 of 0 equals, and the right side didn't change, it's just L of f. All right, so why are we writing it like this? Because the initial conditions are going to be uh, y of 0, y prime of 0, y double prime of 0, up through y n minus first derivative of 0. So we've separated out by initial conditions. So y k of 0 for k equals 0, 1 to n minus 1 are initial conditions. So all we have to do is solve for L of y. So once you have this thing written down, all you have to do is solve for L of y. So basically, here's L of y. How do you solve for it? You add all the other terms to the other side. And then divide by that coefficient in front. Oh, once you do that, You'll have L of Y equals stuff. And how do you solve for Y? Of course, L inverse. So you get L out of there by taking L inverse. So there is a table on page 306, which has, I don't have written down what it is, but I believe it's a bunch common Laplace transforms. So some common L of Fs. So you don't have to necessarily compute them all by hand. You could know some of them and then use the fact that it's linear uh, and then split it up. So if you had like sine plus cosine, if you knew L of sine, L of cosine, and you had L of sine plus cosine, you just add those two separately together. All right, it's a good place to leave you. So we didn't solve anything yet.